Here we will discuss how to calculate weekly cumulative incidence. When we plot our data, we will see some graphs like this. So going back to the definition of cumulative incidence, it is the number of new cases during a time period divided by the total population at risk at the start of that time period. When we are calculating weekly cumulative incidence, our time period will be one week or seven days. The population at risk now is going to be the total population minus all the cases that had already happened at the start of that week. So the assumption we are using here is that if someone gets infected with uh, SARS-CoV-2 and have COVID-19, that they will not be susceptible for infection again. That is an assumption. According to that assumption, we will take the total population of the county and reduce all the cases up until the start of the week. Uh, in each of the weeks, we will calculate the cumulative incidence. So this is the graph that we will like to plot and we will use 10 of the counties as an example. So we'll use the ones that are listed here in yellow. So to calculate the weekly cumulative incidence, we want to first calculate the weekly cases. And this is calculated from daily cases by taking the sum of seven days worth of cases. And then we will also calculate the population at risk. I just explained how that is done by taking the total population of the county, uh, reducing the number of cases that had happened at, until that point. Thereby, we will be able to calculate the weekly cumulative incidence, and we will do so per 10,000 individuals. So the weekly uh, number of cases is going to be calculated by taking So these are the weekly cases. So the weekly cases are going to be a calculation of taking seven days of worth of cases and calculating it for the seventh day. The address population is going to be the population minus the total number of cases up until that point. By using these two data, we have calculated the weekly cumulative incidence shown right here. And by doing that, as you can see, now we have data points that are seven days apart. So what I did was I calculated it for all the days and then deleted the days in between all these weekly days. So what we can see here are these are the number of cases that happen in each of these weeks. So new cases that happen in each week divided by the total population at risk and multiplied by 10,000 because that's the calculation we will be doing. So to obtain a graph like this, what we do is we will use the data set that says weekly cumulative incidence. And in this case, we will start right here, uh, the, first of, uh, the first of March. How we got the first of March was by going to our cumulative cases. And our cumulative cases days, we started from the 24th of February, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, a week started on the 1st of March, and so on. Uh, we calculate the rest of them as well. So what we'll do is we will go ahead and select the 10 counties we would like to plot, select all the data, and as you can see, we only have about 11 time points here, even though we started out with 77 days, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11. We will go to insert a scatter plot, and it already starts looking like the graph we saw before. We will open this as a new uh, tab. We will call this weekly cumulative incidence plot. And then we will just do some formatting changes to bring it up to kind of the stand we would like to have it in. Select the graph, make it aerial, make this 28 font, 
make everything bold and black. Let's get rid of the grid. And let's also get rid of the outer borderline border for the chart. And then we will edit the axis. Make it black, a three point axis. Same thing for this one, three point axis in black. Let's put the tick marks. Same for this side as well. Now let's get a, a legend up on top. To do that, we go to design, add a chart element, legend, more legend options, and we will have it overlap on the top right hand corner. And then we have it in the side here. Let's go and select our data. We go to select data and we already have them selected. We just need to add the legend. So we first start with series one, go to our counties and use the four letter code that we will use for each of the counties. I made a mistake here. Let's go and see what the mistake was. That should have been this one here. And then the last one is right here. And just make sure they are all unique. And that's the list that we have. Okay. So let's go ahead and take care of the x-axis. Let's take away the overlap that's right here which we will go to numbers and the type. We will just have the month and the date. Then we will also go to the minimum where we right now have uh, February 19th. We'll bring it up to the 1st of March. To do that, we will add 11 days. That brings us to the 1st of March. And we will have this every two weeks, or 14 days apart, which will give uh, the same numbers that we had in our cumulative incidence graph. So most of it looks good. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit smaller, put it to the side. We can even reduce the font of this slightly since uh, it seems a little cluttered, but that looks good. Let's go ahead and add um, access titles. We go to design, add chart element, access titles, both for the horizontal and the vertical axis. This would be, um, so in this case, we're looking at the weekly cumulative incidents. So we will mention this as weekly cumulative incidents per 10,000 individuals. That looks good. And then for the x-axis, we will have this as the date. That's our x-axis here. Now, the main other thing we want to do is maybe clean up our graph a little bit. It's not as bad as it was in the the cumulative incidents with all the time points, but still, to make it more consistent, we will go ahead and increase the thickness and re uh, remove these markers from these graphs.
and give them the color scheme that we would like to have here as well. So let's start with uh, bronze right here. We would like to start that with red, 3.5 thickness and no markers. So we can remove the markers. Let's go to the next one. And for the last five, we will have them as dotted lines. So by doing that, we were able to get these graphs to be a little bit more clearer, a little bit more presentable. Uh, and the only other change is maybe the y-axis is a little bit cluttered here. So we can go ahead and reduce some of these points on the axis. So we will make our major units to be every 20 instead of 10. And overall, this looks pretty clean. So let's have a look at what we wanted to get at and see how our graph looks like. Looks pretty similar to me. The only other thing that I had done was uh, make this chart title an overlay and even give it a chart title. So we can call it a weekly cumulative incidence and whatever group we have. and make it an overlay by going to design, add chart element, chart title, and centered overlay. And now we have a very similar graph to what we had before. And once we have our weekly cumulative incidents, and then we have the different groups, we can definitely go back to uh, putting these together and what we will see them as uh, comparing the different groups, we see for group 1 with the highest cumulative incidence that we had observed, where we saw the number of cases increased until about the 1st of April or about the first week of April. And then there was a steady decline in the number of new cases or the new cumulative incidence. Looking at group 2, we see there is still a slight rise. Maybe some counties there was a peak and now it is going down. Looking at group 3, we see um, there are still certain cases in certain counties, maybe some on the rise as well. 
And even if you look at our data, looking at the four different states and the different counties, we kind of see a picture where how the COVID-19 spread in different states. Looking at New York, we see how the cases all increase with the peak happening and now there is a decline. Looking at Texas, we actually see there is a tendency of certain cases still on the rise. California, certain counties, especially LA, is having still an increase until the 10th of May. Florida, uh, there are certain cases on a baseline level with some counties that have seen a peak and now coming down as well. 